Hey everybody, welcome to our group study this week. Everything is a little bit different because uh, we went to a press pause and nobody in any of our worship facilities. That was a strange experience uh, for you, I assume, uh, preaching in front of basically an empty room. It was the craziest thing I've experienced as a communicator to date. So yeah, but, but it worked out okay. I think I, it, yeah, it was different. Right. I, I actually, I, I really do feed off of the energy of the room. Yeah. And I don't realize how much until I'm in this situation. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I loved, I loved it. I, I was actually one of the ten or so people that were in the room at the time, and 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 really, I just, I just felt the spirit of God. And when we were, you, you were, you know, kind of leading people through the prayer of salvation, it was really powerful to me to think um, that someone that maybe has never even really heard the gospel um, could have been tuned into Facebook or really somehow or another found our league through an invitation from, or maybe were invited by a neighbor or CG. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I'm glad that. That, that was a powerful, a powerful, a powerful part, part of it. My, my thought was, they're, you know, with coronavirus or, or whatever, you know, the scare, right. so to speak. Um, I, I just think, think it probably, God leverages everything. And of course, so I'm guessing some people's um, guard had been dropped a little bit because they're going, oh my gosh, I'm vulnerable right. to something yeah. I can't control. Um, which is really and you weren't worried about what anybody else in the room thought about you at yeah. that point, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and that's what the gospel does, is it points us. To, to the, the reality, reality that there are things, things that we can't control, control namely, um, we can't, like, like we have to have help to be forgiven of sin. Yeah. So, so along this lines, 10 years ago, um, this really wasn't possible for, for a church like ours. There may have been two or three churches at that point 10 years ago um, that could do that, but, but this wasn't even possible for, you know, 99% of churches. Um, we oftentimes hear the negative about um, technology. Yeah. But talk to me about the positives of what we were able to see accomplished um, today through technology. Yeah, yeah so, so I think, think you, know, you know, one of one, one of the negatives, negatives is you have technological glitches, glitches and, right? Yeah. And that, that's just. But I think the positive was probably the most people. Like I don't know this statistically true, but one of the things we talked about is it's very likely that today set the record of the number of people yeah. who were using the internet. To, to try, try to, to connect, connect with the body of believers. That's crazy. And, and I think that, that, that needs to be celebrated. celebrated. Um, the, the other, other thing that I think is interesting is we are, we're are we able to connect technologically with people we don't know that are curious about who we are and what we think, but they're not going to come here to figure it out. Mm. But yeah. they might log on and they might listen and they may see some of the interaction you know, where people are encouraging one another, where people are saying, I want to pray for you, or here's the issue. I'm, I'm praying down supernatural power to, to help cover. Um, and I, I don't know. I just think that those things, those things couldn't happen without the technology to give somebody maybe that kind of quiet, private space to interact with the body first. And, and then hopefully, hopefully be introduced into the body of actual believers, like physically, one-on-one, -on -one, life on life. Mm -hmm. um, but, but technology, there's, there's so many people that that's, that's the community they live in yeah. anyway, and, and the church, church needs to be right. invested in that in there. space for sure. Yeah. So, so there's a song that we sing that says, um, "You took what the enemy meant for evil." And you use it for good. And, of course, we find that um, scripturally repeated in so many passages like Romans 8, 28 and, and, uh, and several as Ephesians chapter 2. You see several places where that's the case. And so maybe it's good for you as a group to stop and pause and maybe think of the things um, that you've experienced in the past that the enemy has meant for evil but that God has turned and used for good. Yeah. And then secondly, how this you know, kind of evil disease uh, that has really, you know, paralyzed not just America, not just, you know, our, our state or our community, but the entire world. And, and talk about how God can use it for good. Maybe yeah. even, you know, talking about these, I think that might be something really helpful um, for all of you at home to, to kind of, you know, check into. There's, a, there's something I heard the other day that I thought was interesting, uh, and I want us to discuss this because your message made me think of it. It said, feed your faith and starve your doubts. Feed your faith and starve your doubts. How do you do that? Well, I, I mean, I think as for a believer, right? The the best way for me to feed my faith is to remember how faithful God has been okay. already. Um, because it's like you, as long as you continue to consume truth of how faithful He's been, consume truth of what the Scripture says about God. Yes. So, so, so when you when you read the Bible, yeah. you're saying that, that, that a lot of that is remind. Yes, feeding your faith. Okay. Yeah. Because apart from the Scripture, apart from prayer, apart from remembering how faithful God has been, right. um, I think that there's a chance that we start 
believing maybe God was caught off guard. Right, okay. And, and God was like, oh my gosh, what in the world is going on? What is COVID-19? Right. Like, I had no idea. That Who has the virus machine out around here, you know? Right, yeah. <laughs> and, and when we, if we start to, and no one would, most people would never actually say it that way. Right, of course. But what we have a tendency to do whenever we, don't, don't feed our faith is we begin to give into the flesh. Right. The flesh doubts. The flesh wonders. The flesh doesn't have confidence in spiritual things. Right. But the spirit, we feed the spirit by reading the word, by praying, by being edified by other believers. Yeah. By which is which is what the people are doing right now in their in their community groups. Well, that was another positive of technology. Is ironically enough. The, the way, way we did church, church this week is more, more similar to the early church than, than what we do week in and week out. So, yeah. I don't like think one's necessarily better than the other. I love the big, large gathering, and yeah, we're going to get back to that as soon as we're able. <laughs> But what a beautiful thing for the church to gather all over the place in these little micro you know, site kind of things. And, and I don't know. There's just something, there's something really special about that. It's almost like... God leveraged a bad situation that was birthed out of the brokenness of humanity to leverage the church to do something that we wouldn't have we wouldn't have done otherwise. Like I mean, or at least not this fast. Good, it's good. And and starve your doubts. How do we do that? Because I mean, I, I know I know I still struggle with fear and doubt and all that kind of stuff. Um, what, what what do you do? Do you do you have anything in place? Well, I mean, I, I mean my go-to, and I know it sounds like it's just church chatter no. but I, I think you got to get into the truth oh yeah okay because if you get into the truth truth will always prevail over doubt truth reminds you reminds me um so i think this the scripture i think listening uh interacting with other believers hearing their stories uh squelches my doubt because there may be times when i'm like i don't know how i'm gonna get through this i doubt god's gonna even work on my behalf but if i hear somebody else say no i've been in the same situation and right he, he this is the how he worked um, then, then it, it, it begins, begins, I think, to start, start my doubts. I don't know. Yeah, I, mean, I, think, I think it's some of the same, same stuff. Honestly. Yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. I think it, it's probably both. I also think that that really we need to encounter Christ because you think of like, of course, the most famous doubter in all of Scripture is Thomas. Uh, I think Thomas know. gets a bad rap. Yeah, yeah go probably ahead. so. Uh, but he's the most famous uh, for it. And and when and what ultimately changes is when Jesus walks in and he says, you know, here, look at my wounds, and and he's like, you know, my Lord and my God. It's not like he actually has has to feel um, his wounds. And so there is a sense in which, in which maybe this season slows you down a little bit. Yeah. Um, there'll be a temptation to just withdraw and get into your own devices um, and, and, you know, kind of disconnect. From your Last night, my family, we played, uh, we played charades. I'm like thinking, how long has it been since my family has played charades? Did you win? No, I lost, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it was volatile? Uh, no, not at all. It was my wife's fault, clearly. Oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> our team, our team should have won. We were stacked. <laughs> but uh, but we, we lost. So, uh, but, but what's, what's interesting is, is, that, is that, you know, spending some time with family reminds me of how much I like my family. Yeah. But I think the same thing is true when it comes to Christ. I hope that people will carve out a little bit of time, you know, yeah. um, to really examine their relationship with the Savior, to really savor that like we can be doing with our own families and we can be doing with our own lives um, during the season. Yeah. Well, well, the, the original, original sermon that I was had prepared, right? Uh, one, one of the things that I was going to mention and try to really push believers toward was I think sometimes we don't believe God is going to see us through or we don't believe that God's way is the best way. And it's probably because it's been a long time since we've actually tried it God's way. <laughs> or hung, even hung out with him. Yeah. And so how do you know that God's... And so whenever you have doubt, I think getting closer to the truth, getting closer to the Spirit, getting closer to the wisdom, the wise counsel of the Scripture, that, in my mind, that, that has the greatest strength to squelch doubt most quickly. Yeah. So how do you feed your faith? How do you starve your doubts? That's one of the questions that we're hoping that you'll uh, uh, take a look at. Yeah. Anything else you want to add to this? Well, I, there won't be a written discussion guide right, okay. this week. So I just want to be sure. And if there's one posted, it's probably for my holiness sermon. Okay. So it's not making any sense with the sermon that we actually did. Right. So um, I don't think it's been posted. You shouldn't probably be able to even have access to it. But there won't be one for this. So this video is really in the questions that David has prompted. Will be, will be the one. So Randy is discouraging holiness. And wait, is that... 
Oh, I'm sorry, I must have misunderstood. That, that'll be for my next press conference, I think. Good. Well, we, we do thank you so very much uh, for being a part of this. We hope that your groups go great. Um, there, is a, there is a lot to talk about these days and a lot to see that God is redeeming. Uh, God bless you, and we'll share with you next week.